Uh, well, it's 64 days on. We didn't expect to still be counting mm. uh, the days that the boys have remained in uh, captivity. Yeah. Uh, but the six boys are still with, uh, with their uh, captors and uh, they're yet to regain freedom. Nigerians are hoping they reunite uh, with their parents uh, really soon. Mm. But you can uh, join the conversation online by tweeting at TVC Breakfast on Twitter uh, using the hashtag Ekbe6. Yeah. Now we have joining us human rights activist and director of International Press Center, Larry Arugundadi, joins us now via Skype. Larry, good morning. It's good to have you join us right now. Well, well good morning. Although it's not so good that we're still talking about the uh, uh, six. Uh, the FB6. Certainly, it's not yeah, a good morning six. from. It's not a good morning from that window. Mm -hmm. I know you've been counting as we have been counting, and we've been hoping not to count again. But at this point where we are right now, how disappointed are you or how hopeful are you? If I have to put this side by side, what plays in your mind when you stay here 64 days on and these boys are not home yet? Well, what, what plays in my mind is, is the fact that uh, we're not treating this as a national uh, issue, as a national you know, tragedy, if you want to use that, uh, use that word. Uh, I think that... Uh, you know, the, the, the advocacy, you know, the agitation, uh, the campaign, and the effort for the release of these uh, boys uh, should now be at, at the level, you know, of, uh, if you like, you know, the Chibok, uh, the Chibok uh, girls. We should treat it with that level of, uh, of uh, seriousness. And my own thinking really is that, you know, why is it that this is being made to look as if it's a, it's a local government affair alone, is that of the Lagos state alone? For me, as far as this concerns students, because it could happen anywhere, I think that this should be a matter of uh, federal you know, emergency mm. to really take this seriously. Because uh, you just have to be worried. Uh, we are not even sure of you know, the state of, this, you know, of these uh, students. So I, I think that uh, one is disappointed that this matter is not getting the required, uh, if I would like to put it that way, national attention. So what you're saying then is you're, you're not confident even when the acting president says he, the federal government will be collaborating or is already collaborating with the uh, legal state government and, of course, with the security forces to ensure that these kids are brought home uh, safely. Well, I mean, that is at the level of the acting president, which is quite uh, encouraging and reassuring. But then what we would then want to see is you know, follow-up action because the, the, the acting president is the political head of the government. Uh, those who would really move in into this matter are the security agencies. So we expect from this moment to hear some regular briefings from the Inspector General of Police, uh, from the Director of the you know, uh, State, security, uh, State Security Service, uh, possibly the National you know, Intelligence Agency, uh, to let us know that you know, this is the level of... Uh, engagement that we have had with uh, our counterparts in Lagos State, uh, with the Lagos State Police Command, with the Zona Command, and uh, you know, these are the coordinated efforts that are being made. You see, in matters like this, uh, communication you know, really, really matters. We know that they won't disclose every detail uh, because of uh, the sensitive nature of this matter, but there are some that you know, could you know, be relayed, or at least to give some assurance to give some assurance to the parents that you know something something is being is being done as far as these uh, uh, students you know are concerned. So what I'm saying in that sense is that yes, uh, the statement of the active president is quite welcome, but then you now need to see some follow-up you know actions on the part of uh, the relevant uh, agencies that could help to unravel the mystery of these uh, six uh, students. All right. Now, in the case where when it comes to the deployment of security agencies or security apparatus to issues like this, the state governments certainly have uh, their, their hands tied technically to a great extent when all the security apparatus from the police to the DSS and all of that are owned by the federal government. Does this call for uh, state policing in, in the real term of it? Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's really, you know, neither here nor there. Uh, and I, I think that, uh, I, I do not really think that, I mean, this is the time for us to, you know, begin to engage in, you know, in this, uh, in this uh, debate because it could actually cause a lot of distraction. Uh, there are many sides to the argument for state police. Uh, people, you know, are skeptical that if you have state police, 
uh, you know, uh, what would they, you know, be used or could they be turned to the political tools of the state? I mean, you just have the case of the fact that, uh, you know, where states, you know, conduct elections, uh, opposition parties rarely win. So, but what I'm saying is that, look, be that as it may, uh, as far as this matter is concerned, nothing says that you cannot have, you know, cooperation uh, between, you know, the federal, you know, security agencies, uh, you know, the governor of the state who is the chief security officer of the state, although he does not really control the place, and then, you know, you know the, the state police commissioner, because we're dealing with a particular, you know, emergency. Uh, of course, we need to address on the long run the question of, uh, you know, who controls the state, so that even if you don't have a state police, uh, because right now we're having a process of constitutional amendment, I think, you know, there should be some uh, element of uh, power given to the governors, uh, or rather for the commissioners of police to be accountable you know, to the governors. That is, mm. a commissioner of police does not necessarily have to wait for the directive of the inspector general of police to move, you know, in certain, you know, circumstances. I believe that governors should be given some powers to direct or summon the state's commissioner of police to take action, you know, in particular, you know, instances. Mm. It, it, as a matter of fact, what this uh, crisis has actually exposed is, uh, you know, the, the, the level of... Uh, you know, on seriousness at which we treat issues like this. You know, in other countries, if a single citizen, you know, gets missing, you know, a kid maybe at the beach or a soldier, you know, it becomes, you know, a national issue. Everybody is talking about it. And I think that this is the point that uh, the uh, Save uh, Schools and Communities Advocacy, you know, have been making over time now mm. that, you know, we need, you know, concerted efforts uh, in this, uh, in this uh, regard. Uh, and I think okay, that, uh, Larry, if I could, if I could uh, butt in here, speaking of cooperation and concerted efforts, um, uh, Governor Ambode, Akiumi Ambode of Lagos State himself, uh, during his visit uh, to uh, the traditional rulers in the Kurudu and Ekpe Axis, uh, did say that these abductors are not spirits. And, yeah. of course, uh, he, he passed the buck to them to do everything to ensure that these boys are... Uh, uh, set free. But what about the communities themselves where these things actually happen? Uh, the issue of intelligence gathering, what do you think is at the root of this where people really are not encouraged to uh, give intelligence or give some kind of information or tip off to security operators? Well, apparently, you know, people are generally afraid of uh, what you could call, you know, backlash because uh, it's not ruled out that some of these. Uh, you know, kidnappers would have links or possibly even operate in some of those communities. So you, you are careful, you don't want to go and give information and then you get exposed and then you get, you know, attacked. So again, there has to be processes of, uh, you know, reassurance, there has to be processes of uh, guaranteeing, you know, the, the, the safety of those who might want to be, you know, whistleblowers in this particular case uh, that are bothers on, on, on security. And, uh, and that is why I think that uh, the engagement and cooperation uh, yes, quite welcome the statement made by the governor, you know, challenging the communities, challenging the traditional rulers. But this is also a security matter. And I do know that we also have a number of, you know, you know private, you know, uh, security experts, private security organizations, uh, you know, that could be brought in, you know, to be part of these processes. In fact, you also need, you know, uh, you know uh, scientists, technologists, people who could, you know, uh, put one and two together and say that, you know, this is the possible location of these elements. And then you also begin to, because in cases like this, if you look at some case studies of things like this, or even if you look at the way the American government has, you know, tracked, you know, terrorists, uh, you begin to ask yourself, if these people are in a location, they must be eating, they must, you know, have, you know, some food, they, there must be some chain, you know, of supply, there must be some, you know, movement. So, I mean, this is a real matter of intelligence, and I think it's actually beyond the scope of communities now, because uh, definitely you are dealing with a very sophisticated group, and you also need a sophisticated, you know, approach that involves many things. Surveillance, the use of, you know, drones, and things like that. And I believe that these are some of the, uh, uh, you know, technologies that our government have acquired, especially in the battle against, you know, Boko Haram. Mm. So let us, you know, try and... Uh, you know, deploy, you know, these, uh, you know, scientific uh, uh, approach, you know, towards, you know, or having, you know, this uh, mystery. But as much as possible, the government needs to carry the citizens, you know, along. Like I said earlier on, it's not every detail that will become, you know, public knowledge, mm. but some of it, just, you know, because you're also dealing with managing trauma 
you know, the trauma of the parents. So the fact that there is, you know, maybe, you know, regular briefing to say, this is where we are, we can't disclose all, but these are the details involving all those concerns. You know, government at this stage should not treat anybody as opposition, uh, you know, be it the, you know, save uh, schools and communities coalition, every other person's concern. You know, there must be that, you know, uh, unity of purpose uh, mm. to address this particular very, very serious issue that, I can, like I said, uh, qualifies to be a federal emergency. Oh, all right, Larry, the, what, you talked about the issue of surveillance and all of that. We want to believe that the Nigerian security agencies know their terrain. They understand where and where and where in any of these um, boys can be kept within this area. But 62 day, 64 days and counting, and uh, we, we don't seem, seem to still know where these boys are right now. Do you think maybe at the corner of your mind somewhere they're still within the territorial area of Nigeria? Well, I mean, it's, it's very, very difficult to say, uh, quite frankly. But my own uh, assumption would be that they will be within the borders of, you know, this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, country. And, uh, and again, this is where, you know, we also need, you know, some level of information. Because if, if you are communicating with somebody by, by, you know, let us assume that uh, the negotiations have been taking place, you know, by phone, whether by satellite phone, at least you could, you could tell that the person is talking to you is speaking from, you know, you know, within this country or, you know, or from outside. So again, this is where uh, quality uh, intelligence, you know, comes in. Uh, we've had uh, several security um, experts here to talk about this particular issue. Is it time, really, uh, for the state government uh, to begin to insist that the schools, whether in Ekwe, Ikurudu, Ajangbadi, wherever, uh, should provide some kind of basic security uh, so that you can actually have some kind of trail when such things happen? Yes, I, I, I really think so. I really think so. I do know that uh, one of the civil society organizations, uh, the Women, uh, the, you know, uh, World C, you know, Women Advocacy Research and Documentation Center, has actually done a lot of uh, work on making schools uh, safe. Uh, they were, their primary area of focus was Bruno State. But if you read, you know, their report, uh, this is something that could apply, you know, in all, in all, in all schools, uh, you know, because as we address this uh, question, there's also the need to now work with various schools. What are your security measures? What alert system do you have in place? Uh, what level of information do you have? So that even when you notice you know, some you know, funny movements, you could quickly you know, pass on that information, and then you know, uh, actions could be taken. Well, I mean, we do not have enough. Let, let us also face the reality that Nigeria is under police. Uh, the policemen themselves are under acute. Uh, so it, it's not possible to have you know, uh, policemen, you know, in, in every school as it were. Mm. But I think that there could, there could also be some level of, uh, you know, zonal, you know, policing of these, uh, of these schools, you know, schools in particular, you know, areas. So that the, the key thing really is the question of, you know, that level of uh, security consciousness, uh, mobilization of teachers, of students themselves. And then, you know, the question of when you notice this, how quickly do you get information? Where does that information go? So I think that this is an area that uh, you know the state government could also you know uh, look into. Okay. Uh, they're already looking into it, maybe more right. uh, closely to mm. address uh, problems like this. All right, Larry Arugundali, thank you very much for talking to us on uh, on this issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. You're welcome.